I'll be showing 12 new features in Microsoft Whiteboard. This includes new loop component integration, the follow me feature, template updates, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is reusable whiteboards. I'm here in a Teams meeting and I'm gonna open up Microsoft Whiteboard here from the share tray. What you see here is existing whiteboards that have already been created. So I can choose from existing whiteboards. In this case, I'm gonna choose new whiteboard right here. And now I've got a new whiteboard. If you wanna get back to that list of all your different whiteboards, click the home button right here, whiteboard gallery, and you can get back to them really quickly. So we'll go into the one I'm editing. The second new feature is support for loop components in whiteboards. Loop components are collaborative components that are rolling out across M365. You can have these in Teams, now in Outlook, they're coming to Word, there are loop pages as well. I'm gonna switch over to Teams and grab a loop table component that I've already been working on so we can collaborate in this meeting. So let's go to Teams. Here's a chat I had with Nestor and Patty, and here's my loop component right here. I'm gonna go and copy link right here, click this, now let's go back into the whiteboard. And now I can go and we can collaborate in real time and I can size it a little bit bigger and we're gonna have Patty and Nestor add things as well. So what you can see is that Nestor and Patty are also in here. They've added some information. I can get their little hovering here and see who has the file open. And I can also copy this component and put it in other places. I can put it in Outlook. I can put it in Word for the web. I can even open the loop page itself right here. So if I click this link, here I am the loop page and everyone is still collaborating. I could put this loop component in lots of other places. The third new feature is the follow me feature. Now I have a whiteboard here, but if I zoom out, you'll see there are other parts. And sometimes when you're on a whiteboard, you're moving around and you don't want other people to get lost when you're moving around that board. So what I'm gonna do is go up and right here, I'm Deborah Berger, I have this everyone follow me option. I'm gonna click this and now at the bottom it says participants are following you. Now the other people have to choose to accept your following request. So let's switch over to Nestor and Patty and see what that looks like. I'm switched over as Patty here and there's this little Deborah Berger invited you to follow their view. So I will click accept. Now it says I'm following Deborah Berger. So as she moves around the whiteboard, my screen will move with her. I'll have Nestor accept as well really quickly. Okay, Nestor also has the same little invite to follow. So I'll click accept. And now I'm following Deborah Berger. So as Deborah moves around the board, I'm gonna switch back and you'll see that everyone else's screen changes from where it is here. So Deborah's gonna zoom out and she's gonna go over here and zoom in really closely to this part of the board that says smart and we're gonna have the specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely goals. So we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna work on this attainable part right here. So I'll say, now let's switch back to Nestor and see what his screen looks like. So as Nestor, it's zoomed into the exact same spot, attainable, here's my sticky note. It says I'm following Deborah Berger. Now if I wanna stop following Deborah Berger, maybe I wanna zoom out and look at a different part, I can still do that and zoom over here and check out other things as Nestor. But at the bottom it says live, resume following Deborah Berger. So if I wanna jump back to where Deborah is, I click the little arrow and bam, it jumps me right back to the exact spot that Deborah is in. Let's switch back to Deborah. When I finish doing the part where people are following me, I can go up here and say stop follow me mode and turn that off. The fourth new feature is a timer function in Whiteboard. So in the upper right, you'll see this little clock called timer. I'm gonna click here and now I get a little timer. So maybe I wanna give a three minute timer for an exercise and I will just click start timer and it's gonna start up here. And now there is a three minute countdown happening. I can pause it if I want, like here, hit play again or I can hit stop, or if people need more time, I can easily click add a minute. So now it's 351, I'll click stop. So that's a handy little timer function that is now built into Whiteboard. The fifth new feature is the ability to create your own templates in Whiteboard. I'll go to plus here and I go to templates and there's a bunch of great templates that already exist, but now I can create my own templates. So if I click here, I can click plus create new template. Now, I don't have anything on my whiteboard, so I'm gonna quickly add some content to my whiteboard and then save it as a template. I've created the ultimate TPS report planning whiteboard template. Now I'll just click create new template, give it a name, click save, and then close. And look at this, it's a beautiful template right here. If I hit the three dot menu, I can delete it, I can share it or rename it. So I can share this template with other people. So if I click share, I can send this to Nestor, click send, 
And now Nestor can open up this template and save it to his library. That's where right here, if you see shared with me, those whiteboard templates will show up there. The sixth new feature is searching for templates. So right here, there's now a search box. There's so many different templates down here. I might wanna search for a very specific one. In this case, I'll search for brainstorm. And there's a few, brainstorm, topic brainstorm, brain writing, affinity diagram. So really easy to find different types of templates. In this case, I want the brainstorm workshop. I'll click here and go over here and click. And there is my beautiful brainstorm workshop template. The seventh new feature is support for YouTube video links as well as blog links and other types of web links. I'm gonna paste a YouTube video link right here with control V. And hey, there's a new video, my Microsoft 365 Copilot announcement on my YouTube channel. I'm gonna paste a blog link in here as well. Hey, here's the what's new in Microsoft whiteboard blog link. This is a live link, I can click it and launch out. And with the video, if I click play, it'll actually play the video right here on the whiteboard. Similar to how you can embed OneNote videos from YouTube as well. The eighth new feature is what's called the velocity eraser. So I have some ink here and I'm gonna click on the eraser. Now, normally when you erase, it just keeps the same size. So if I go here, I click and it's erasing a little piece at once. Now, if I start scrubbing faster, my eraser is gonna get bigger. See how the square gets bigger and I can erase things really fast. So that's called the velocity eraser. Just click on your mouse and start scrubbing faster and faster and the square will get bigger and bigger as your eraser. The ninth new feature is default labels on sticky notes. I'll go here and click plus on the left, go to notes, and I'm just gonna click on a simple yellow sticky note and I'll click here. Now first I'll just add some text. When I click away from the sticky note, it adds my name automatically. So I'm signed in as Deborah Berger. What this does is it makes it really easy to see who is adding what sticky note. And I'll have a couple more added from Nestor and Patty. You can see Nestor added a sticky note, so did Patty. If I hover, it's an active name. So it's really nice to be able to see what's going on. If you wanna turn off the authors on the sticky notes, you can control that as well. Go up to settings gear on the right, click that, and there's a new authors option. Click this, and now I can just flip this switch off. And now all the author names are gone. The tenth new feature are improvements to fonts and formatting in sticky notes. First off, you can see that the fonts are already improved. It used to be kind of a cursive font, and now it's more a standardized font for all of the text in whiteboard. And if I click in here, maybe I'm gonna select this word, and there's the little A with the pen option to format text. I can bold, underline, and indent. Pretty simple options, but these are some nice improvements to be able to have in your sticky notes. The 11th new feature is auto sizing and formatting in sticky notes. So if I have this and I make it really small, you can see that the font changes with it. It used to be that the font would get overlaid. Now it's really easy to make your sticky note bigger in this case, and the font auto sizes with it. The 12th new feature is that the whiteboard is immediately available after the meeting. So right here on the left, I've gone to the meeting in the chat and meeting whiteboards right here, I'll click here. And my whiteboard is still available and I can collaborate after the meeting, even though we're not in that meeting itself. If you wanna keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.